Bitcoin Brad speaking. Um, today, obviously, there's a lot happening in the market. It's only happened very recently, so I wanted to get straight into it. Uh, the Korean uh, the government has declared that ICOs are to be banned, um, and that's come from the very top of the gov of governmental instruction. So I thought, what better time to address this? Um, because obviously, there's going to be a lot of FUD in the market, and there's going to be a lot of market movement in the next you know few hours, the very least. I've noticed it's already done the slip. So let's get straight into it. Um, and also, shout out to a guy named Amid. He um, mentioned that I talk too much and that I don't, uh, I'm a bit verbose, so I will try to be really clear, get straight to the point, um, out of respect for you, Amid. So cheers, mate. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the ICO ban itself. Um, and there's an article I found from at Gizmodo, so you can check them out at gizmodo.com.au. And basically, uh, it asks the question, uh, why ICO, what are what are ICOs and why are they getting banned in China? Now, obviously there's going to be a lot more articles that come out relating to Korea, so I thought this is the best time to simply provide some key information about uh, those who don't even really understand ICOs themselves. So this article was really great because it just goes into finite detail. And why it's particularly relevant, I think, is because basically in my, in my view, again, I'm not providing financial advice by any means, but... It seems to me that uh, Korea is in every way like the sister country of, uh, sorry, my children in the background. <laughs> That's all good. That's the way it should be. Um, so, yeah, as I was saying is that China uh, is pretty much like the brother country of, of Korea in many of the business formalities and functions. So cryptos and blockchain really aren't that dissimilar in that um, they both have very, very similar platforms and, um, that they are establishing and asserting in each of their countries. So that would make every sense as to why um, China is the world leader in terms of uh, proactive blockchain initiatives uh, and uh, they're proactive in their protectionist um, method, method for ensuring the longevity of the blockchain itself in their ecosystem and their financial ecosystem. So let's go quickly back to China. Check out this site because what it will do is it will explain what the ICO is and that's important for anyone to understand. I will say that in the research that I've done, and I've only been in the game a little bit, like about a month I've been doing some research, so I've got a long way to go, so don't take anything I say as gospel, that's for sure. But what I've learned is that there are two types of uh, definitions when it comes to the ICO. The lay... Um, the, the lay citizen of the, of the crypto world, I think, or those who are new to the game, they would perceive ICO to be uh, akin to other currencies um, and, and function in that respect. But those who delve deeper understand that there's another functionality, and that is a security. I can't emphasize the importance of understanding that because uh, my big focus at the moment is on the value of it. Uh, the tokens being a security um, and kind of moving away from this um, idea of uh, an interactive uh, immutable transaction between two different platforms but really look at the, um, the the blockchain technology underneath it because that will determine whether or not it's a security um, and also the nature in which you are rewarded will also determine how whether it's a security and there's and, and gas provides a good precedent for this uh, securitized structure, uh, digital um, uh, cryptocurrency structure that helps me determine uh, um, and define the, the the token itself called NEO. And ICON, in my opinion, is similar. So this is really relevant because they're also looking at trying to establish a kind of security-like uh, functionality of their token. So really relevant, really important to understand what ICO is. Also, really important to understand that the ICO itself, being the initial coin offering that it stands for, is really, in, in my opinion, just a crowdfunding mechanism. Um, I'm sort of neutral on it anyway, but to be honest, uh, it's looked upon very uh, disfavorably uh, by the governments of both China and Korea because they can't control uh, the ICOs themselves. Um, and when they, in their attempts to append to any to their to the national block, blockchains that these icon and neo are going to become that's my view again um what i think is the, the issue that they've foreseen is that ethereum has just had so many inconsistencies with their ico developments there's so been so many uh, malicious 
uh, companies or pseudo companies that have tried to basically rake huge profits from uh, misleading uh, white papers. So that's what they've done and uh, I think it's a great thing that um, we uh, devalue the processes that um, Ethereum uh, enfranchised uh, through their for, through through the free, uh, the free market methodology. In this way, by putting some sort of uh, uh, stops um, on the ICO market, it actually just helps to build a better better quality um, uh, ecosystem for the future. And that's why it actually the the ban in Korea is really exciting, and it's worthwhile considering it to be one in which the market. Uh, that in terms of future trajectories will be bullish rather than a bear market because this is only going to benefit the ecosystem which is the fundamental for any uh, fun that, that's the key, the buzzword you know for the for someone who's really spending a lot of time researching the blockchain technology so check out Gizmodo it's really good uh, let's move on so today as we heard very recently Rudis has put out a great article explaining that the South Korea has banned uh, raising money through the initial coin offering as you know guys that's called the ICO and it's a big deal um, if you think that you know it is a big deal me personally I think it's not a big deal um, uh, for any other reason but to uh, you know get into the market at a better price it's not going to affect the quality of the blockchain called icon you know, from the Icon Foundation, it's not going to affect NEO in terms of the quality of their blockchain technology. It's just simply going to provide better entry points for those who are considering investing because there's a lot of FUD um, um, that dictates uh, re price reductions at, uh, when these things happen. So, you know, the market will speak for itself. So, you can go through and, um, and read the reasons why, but basically the reason is it's a protect protectionist strategy. The government um, is following suit from China. They're trying to centralise uh, to a degree, which is almost an irony, but it is possible if you look over into NEO and Archon and how they're structured, it's possible to have a degree of control uh, from the government in a decentralised uh, system like this. And they're simply trying to protect the, um, the longevity and the, I guess, the, the security of these two because if you look further into it you'll know very quickly that these are not just simply ICOs with a white paper and that's the huge difference. These two have spent years on NEO and ICON developing their ecosystems well before they presented the idea of the ICO. In fact what they've done is kind of flipped uh, the Western method of uh, a revenue seeking by already establishing huge revenues from the private sector well before. And if you go into it further, you can look at Daily Corporation, you can look at Foson. Both of them um, are very, very um, credible uh, financial institutions. They're back. They're they're you know backed with a billion dollars, uh, billions of dollars of of capital, and they've both invested heavily in these two blockchain technologies. So again. The ICO is really just, a, 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 I guess, a, a dint, you know, or a, it, it's just a, it's just a, a, a small road, roadblock that's easily removed in the, the incomplete highway, the infinite highway that is the blockchain for a long way. So it's not that I'm trying to, you know, talk it up um, as some sort of, you know, infinitely, infinitely valuable resource. But there's no question that right now is an opportune time to do your research on these. So again, look through this. It's really worth reading this article. Um, I'll just read a couple of things. It says here that the, uh, the reason why they ban them is because raising funds through ICOs seem to be on the rise globally. Really, they're talking about Ethereum predominantly. And their assessment is that ICOs are also increasing in South Korea as well, which is actually true. Um, so the, the, there's a regulator um, that's jumped in and decided on behalf of big players like the banks and the taxation system, blah, 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 that for now they are going to ban them. But if you look into the, meth the you know, the post-apocalypse, as many people saw it, of the ICO ban in China, that was really just a stop, uh, a temporary stop. It wasn't something that was going to be a permanent thing. And if you understand Asian cultures, you'll also know that uh, economy... Uh, uh, is paramount to and, and profit is paramount to anything you know in in the 
from an economic standpoint. And that's why they'll continue to blockchain because it is a very economically viable entity um, that is challenge, rivaling and challenging other uh, transaction methods um, and stores of, and methods of for storing value. So uh, here's another report. This was done uh, today, a couple of hours ago. It's a it's from South. Uh, sorry, it's posted by Crypto Coin News, a really credible site. And basically, they are also backing what I'm saying. So I, I'm just providing these so that you can see that I haven't just made this stuff up. South Korea bans initial coin offerings, and it's a report. Um, you know, flick it to Twitter. I'm on Twitter. If you want, um, my name's Brad Laurie. So if you want to find me, you definitely can. Um, there should be a link through my YouTube. But yeah, this one just goes into again uh, the reasoning behind the ban. Um, and again, if you just want to, I'll just read you a couple of quotes on this. Um, they say that they're they're worried about the adverse effects such as increased risk of fraud. And again, that's awesome. You know, I love reading that from the vice chairman because we want a nice, clean report when we when we look at the blockchains of any country because that really is not just the you know a white paper. That is what that's 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 what's going to attract investors into the company. And if you have if you're uh, companies marred by and discredited by a whole heap of um, malicious or um, malevolent um, practitioners who just want to go and steal uh, innocent people's money and run off, you know, into the sunset. Then that does that's just going to simply disaffect the quality of the ecosystem. It's going to reduce the price, and that's what unfortunately Vitalik's dealing with. Um, he his ideology has actually impinged on the the benefits that, or the, the the value of Ethereum as a whole, because you know, whilst his tech was the best in the world, uh, it what it didn't um, conflate with the needs of the government of the time, and that's precisely why it's important to understand the strategies that these countries are taking, because it's it's flip it's flipping the decentralized method on its head within the scope of a decentralized blockchain model. Um, Okay, so the ICO ban, potential implications. Basically, uh, they, are, they can be far-reaching, but at the end of the day, as an investor, they're as far-reaching as we decide. If we decide to be a, a, a participant of the FUD, uh, and then you know, we are going to be, make that more impactful. But if we um, educate ourselves and we become more informed as a, a cryptocurrency uh, crowd uh, and, and of investors, then that's going to only better support the stability of any particular blockchain. And, and again, it's the blockchain that requires the stability, and that's why there are in, in, inbuilt structures to pre prevent, uh, you know, or to discourage, more importantly, mass exodus, because, uh, you know, you lose your benefits if you take the, if you remove your stake um, through their um, trust pro protocol and uh, uh, stake uh, technology. Um, uh, their, 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 their way in which they um, in, in, encourage you or reward you through their uh, stake system. You'll understand if you go into proof of stake and beyond. So that's that little bit. Check that out. And then I'll keep going really quickly. Uh, there's a couple more articles. One is from South Korea. Uh, where is it? From www.ft.com. And it just reinforces what I'm saying. South Korea bans in the initial coin offerings. So just go and read these articles if you want some more confirmation. Uh, here's another one from CNBC. South Korea bans all new cryptocurrency sales. Um, absolutely true, happening right now. And to be honest, you know, if you've got a couple of dollars in the bank, it's great because you can, uh, you can buy and, and you can enter into a market uh, that potentially is going to be really good value. Um, you just have to decide when that suits you. You, can, you just have to decide if it suits you at all, uh, but again, Focus less, if you guys want, on this idea of cryptocurrency and focus more on blockchain. Because if you do that, you'll start to understand really the whole point of why um, the, the, these two, Icon um, and Neo, are so valuable and why these governments are trying to protect its value. Okay, uh, another article that was is worth checking out is by TechCrunch, a highly credible uh Pro crypto site for information, and they have also uh, recently posted 
a, a bit of information I found very interesting, and that is to explain that um, there's a major player entering the exchange market. And the reason why I decided to, this is in Korea, the reason why I want to broach this with you in, in, uh, in concert with all of the other information about the ICO ban in Korea is that these guys would have had some sort of degree of forewarning at the, with, you know, with their connections that they have. Um, and if you start to hear of big uh, entry points uh, in terms of exchange purchases in, in Korea, uh, one maybe might be able to wonder at the very least uh, or investigate why. Uh, how, why would they go and do that um, on the cusp of a major transition like this? Um, and that's happened not just in this instance with uh, Corbett um, selling to Nexon, but also uh, Upbit as well. So I just wanted to raise that with you. Um, because you know there's there's changes happening that we don't know, and often the the fud in the market dictates you know to some degree price uh, price points, but also uh, underpinning everything is uh, the the positions of the whales and how they sort of manipulate markets through their investment, and that would require significant knowledge uh, of that uh, of some things that we aren't privy to. So this was a good sign, and. Uh, this consolidated that as well because there's a fintech firm that has launched just recently into the cryptocurrency ex exchange market and we're talking major investment with upbit uh, there's a and that's all going to send things mobile so very soon um, things are going to change in korea once all of this uh, ico ban a uh, slash bullshit is sorted out you'll find that there's going to be a lot of money to and fro between uh, citizens of Korea, between uh, corporations, enterprises, consortiums, all that sort of thing. It's going to, uh, it's going to move quite rapidly. So it's important to, um, to I, I think, take this uh, ban with a grain of salt because really it's just, you know, it's just a, a, a small blemish in a very open source, um, expansionist market. Yes, but again, worth knowing about, um, and if you want to look further at what Upbit's doing, and as well as, uh, what was the other one, um, Colbert, you know, provide some feedback, guys. I don't monetize my videos, and anything you want to teach me, I really appreciate. I certainly don't know, you know, much at all, but I just try and, pro try and research what I can and when, when I can. Okay, so I wanted to also add this in. It's just a really cool article for those who are freaking out a bit. I understand why you might be, um, but this article was written by Sujan Deswal. Um, way back in 2015, but it's pretty much always appropriate, and it just poses the question how, um, how fear, uncertainty, and doubt, that's the FUD, are used positively for more readership. Now, I want to sort of just tweak that a little bit and think, okay, how can fear, uncertainty, and doubt be used positively um, in, a, in a climate like this when we're facing an, yet another ICO ban? Well, it's really just you know um, um, a melding of psycho psych psychological strategies and investing strategies. If you are one to just uh, you know if you're risk averse, then you're going to be fudded out of the market um, because you know you 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 aren't confident in the longevity of the of the investment. But if you have uh, a, a sound um, knowledge via extensive research or via you know credible sources of the investment you've made, then that's where FUD can actually be positive for you because it won't dictate your action. So check this article out um, from Ad Pushup. I'll just show you there from the Ad Pushup blog. Uh, worth looking at just to provide you with some sort of reprieve if you are a little bit stressed by these changes. Um, and then I found something on Steemit which I found brilliant by Dex, Stable, Dex Staples. Uh, so thanks mate for your post. It's really just raising the question about all the hype and fada and what is it for. Um, so it's just really trying to uh, redress some of the uh, the concern that many people have and, and it explains how that often dictates markets when perhaps it shouldn't because it's really that emotionality that needs to be removed from the equation um, of a quality blockchain. Because the more we do that, the more we're all going to benefit from the long-term growth of the blockchains that we've invested in, provided that they are sound, functioning, and applicable to the real world, which both of these, Icon and Neo, absolutely are. There's proof. It doesn't come from me. Okay, the next thing I want to talk to you about, guys, is uh, a submission by on the 2nd of August. 
um, by Elaine Ramirez, and the title is Crazy for Cryptocurrencies, Why South Koreans Are Risking It All on Ethereum. Now, I don't want to go into anything about, I uh, don't want to sort of rehash uh, old information, but I just wanted to simply present this to you to reinforce that generally South Koreans among as are many Asian countries without trying to be race specific are pro-risk um, when it comes to economic uh, investments and that's a, a that's, that's a, a boon for Asian markets and it reinforces that the, the, li the likelihood for this to only be a temporary thing because the you know everyone in China governments included are wanting to get onto the um, the getting getting into block they want to get into blockchain for its profitability for its potential uh, and for its capacity to expand far beyond the borders of South Korea so when we're talking about risk this country is not risk averse so I would not be stressing too too much and I wouldn't be uh, you know jumping ship on these too quickly uh, let's keep going really quickly um, we want to talk about bite-sized Bitcoin as an excellent YouTuber when it comes to uh, the particulars of Icon. He stood out to me when I was initially doing research about three weeks ago. Um, when He actually posted on the September 12th. So when I watched this, I was blown away by the detail of the CEO. So the guy you're seeing on screen right now, uh, who's, who works with the, the, uh, the author of Bitcoin, who's, you know, who's, being, who's being interviewed by uh, bite size Bitcoin. This CEO goes into a lot of detail. You can see here it's a very long post of 38 minutes. So if you guys want to know a bit more about how the, the ICOM Foundation plan to hyperconnect South Korea and then move beyond those borders, check this out because it is a lot of information um, and it was very, very interesting to listen to. So uh, yeah, I would watch it. I've watched it a few times and it's, it's an invaluable resource to me. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, and I've talked about this guy so much, but I can't help it, he provides very good information. The Chico Crypto, um, Tyler Swope, please have a look at his post um, that he's recently done on September 18 about, uh, specifically about Icon ICO. Um, and it's not because of, uh, of any, um, not because of the title where, you know, it suggests huge returns. Tyler is not about that. He is the real deal when it comes to trying to represent his investments. He backs it with his own money, um, and he does extensive research. He is also very skilled at explaining things, um, you know, to all of us in a really, I mean, easy to understand way. And if you go through his um, through his post, he'll go through and explain things like you can see on the screen. He'll explain what the Icon DAP is and how it all works. And uh, yeah, I just have a lot of respect for him, and I learned a lot just by. Um, you know, listening to his YouTube. Okay, back to the live market. Um, because of people like Tyler, I was able to learn that um, recently um, the exchange in Europe, um, I believe it's in Europe, um, called Hit BTC, they released, uh, or they, up, I don't know what the word is, but they included the ICX slash ETH um, couple, uh, coupled exchange or coupled uh, transaction. So, Basically, you can now trade the ICX token uh, or security. Um, I don't even understand how that's possible when the the company Icon Foundation hasn't actually released its own ICO. But you know, apparently it's possible. Um, I have already traded a couple. You know, I already bought some via this method. Again, it's not financial advice. I really know nothing. But I'm such a uh, fan of the blockchain technology that underpins ICX um, and Neo that. You know, I wanted to go out and, and, and access more of this um, token if I could because in Australia where I'm from, from, I couldn't access it in my market. So it's worth knowing. And last but not least, uh, I wanted to mention this guy. His name is, let me see, Bitcoin Sol. Uh, I was kind of ambivalent a bit about him um, because I've watched a few of his YouTubes before. But, um, you know, he is... He's, he's a, he, he sort of manages his, a, a fund, and you need 50 Bitcoin to be part of that fund. But, and I don't have 50 Bitcoin, but what I do have is in a desire to learn more about pretty much everything crypto and blockchain. And this guy provided a post today, only a few hours ago, um, might be minutes, um, and he explains 
his position, you know, on the whole Korean ban of the ICOs. And I totally agree with him. Um, he basically said, you know, he raised the question, why, why would we go and jump ship um, from an ecosystem that is already well on its way to becoming uh, robust and um, adopted blockchain? So I'll repeat those um, two words again. Already you have Eneo and, and Icon being robust in the sense that they've already explored different agencies, governmental, private sectors, they've, um, they've done a lot of consultations with the private sectors as well, um, and they've also established, importantly, major backing from uh, enterprise, private enterprise, through, and as I've mentioned before, through Daily and through Fosun in China. So these guys really, from the outset, have been planning this, these ecosystems, and the last phase uh, in their um, development model was actually the ICO. And they don't even allocate very many people to that ICO, and they will tell you that if you go and watch these YouTubes that I've presented to you today. So again, I agree with Bitcoin Soul. Nice job, mate. I'll definitely plug some of the research and the information you're posting, just because it is not only current right now, as of you know, today, on September 28, but it is certainly something I'm willing to back, you know, for the future. When other people look back at these videos, perhaps you know, a year from now, they'll be able to laugh and say, "Wow, you know, I'm so glad that it didn't, you know, get flooded out of the market because you know, it's these blockchains are the real deal." So that's it from me. I hope that it's helped you guys, um, and I've posted something recently about Australia and, um, and its potential connection with NEO. Um, you might find that interesting, but overall, I just want to say, guys, a massive thank you for um, listening to my comments um, and for, you know, allowing me to join into the crypto conversation. Signing off, it's Blockchain Brad. Until next time.